Hey everyone. Um, wanted to do another quick video here. This one is about the named volumes. And so I'm going to just do a little demo here on the map I've been working on. Um, basically just go over the basics of named location volumes, what they're for, how they work, you know, the, the usual. So um, basically the concept is that a named location volume will um, it it'll give you a like a location down at the bottom left of the screen to tell you where you're at. There's there's a couple reasons for this. One is obviously to tell you where you're at, but the other one is when you mark, it will actually give that name location as a point of reference. And so uh, with three four three. If you're looking to potentially get a map into matchmaking, um, named locations are a requirement across your entire map. Can't be any playable space that doesn't have a named location. So very important. Um, so let's take a look here. So just a quick overview of what we want to do. And, and what I would recommend is you want to start out with one giant named location around your whole map. And so I've actually added one right here, but you notice the boundary is not even really covering where you stand on the map. So it's it's not doing anything for me. It's really just named location up in the air. It's giant, but it, it really doesn't matter. My My goal here is to encompass the entire map so that if there's any spot that I don't have a named location, it'll just be covered by this general catch-all. So let me just show you before we get started. So this is in the vol volumes section of the gameplay in your forge menu. Volumes, named location volume, it's right there. And so when you spawn one in, Really, there's not much to these. It's basically you have a location name, which you have to select from their pre-populated list. So unfortunately, there's a lot of things that you'd probably like to name a location that are missing, but is what it is. So there's that, and then there's the boundary. Anything within the boundary would be that name, with an exception of if you put a name location inside another name location, it will default to that smaller one um, while you're in it. So it, it makes it really easy when you're doing all your setup. You basically spawn a giant one to cover all your bases. And then you just put in smaller ones for like individual areas or sections of your map and makes it really easy. So with the boundary, um, I'm gonna do the lazy route here. The bottom is five. I'm just going to bump this down and it did like the biggest thing possible. So now I'm going to zoom out here. You can see it's covering my entire map. That's the goal. And it's going through the floor. So when I run it into play mode, and it may be kind of hard to see here on the screen, but if you look under the bottom left corner near the radar, under the runtime budget, it says island. So I really lucked out that island was an option because I made an island. Um, not every map <laughs> is going to have be that lucky. So some of them you have to just kind of pick something that works, kind of create a theme of names. Um, in Disciple, my other Husky Raid map that I made with Karmaplex. Um, we kind of just ended up doing like a north and south sort of um, theme. And I'll, I'll show you that here in the menu. Um, all right, before we do that, I'm going to turn my blockers back off because they bug me. Um, the, the other thing I was going to mention too, so this named location, I have it kind of floating here in the map. Uh, I like to, <coughs> excuse me, I like to put these in places where I don't lose them. Sometimes uh, because they kind of default to a lower bottom 
boundary, then you'll like bring it down low to the ground, which it's fine if you do that, but it's easy for it to like when you center it to get stuck under an object or something, and then it's hard to come back and find. So that's just a little thing I do. I normally try and raise it up so it's visible where I need it. Um, let's look at some of the options here. I'm not going to go through all of them. There is a long list. So at least there there is a lot of options. It's just not everything. So here in the object properties, once you have the named location volume selected, go down to the very bottom is uh, name. And so you have some options, okay? You have alley, alpha, arch, armory, balcony, base, basement, bay doors, beacon, so on. It, there's, there's a lot of options. Um, there's some bottom uh, options. So there's, there's only like four of them, but they're like bottom, mid. That's a common one people would use. Uh, apparently bridge is on here twice for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, let's see here. So then let's go down to some of the... These are the directional. So they, they have basically a set of, of names that will have north, south, east, or west in front of it. So it, it can be helpful to distinguish between two bases uh, I mean, use them however you think is best, but it's got East Alley, East Balcony, East Base, East Basement, Bend, Bridge, bunk, uh, Bunker, Catwalk, Cave, Closet, Courtyard, etc. So long list. There's some weird ones in here, too. It's like, I think they're like inside jokes. Maybe I just am not in on it. Like one of them was like flank steak. <laughs> um yeah, there it is, flank steak. There, there's some weird ones in there, but um, so l let's let's do a quick test of placing one of these. Um, I don't I don't know what we're calling section yet, but uh, let's look in the top. I think there was a a few in the top section. I think scrolling with my mouse is faster here. Let's just see what our options are there. So I have a lot of rocks on the map, so I may come back to some of the rock options, but we'll see. Go through our whole south section. Here we go. Top base, top catwalk, top mid, and top nest. It's not really working for what I want. Um, I wanna say there was one for overhang. Maybe we'll just start with that one. Overhang, there we go. So one bummer is you can't easily look at these like and see what it's set to. So like if I look at this, all it tells me is a named volume. I could go in and manually change the name, but that's a lot of work too. So I'm probably not gonna do that. But right here in the, the top section of the map, we can kind of set this up as our overhang. Now, again, it's only going to be for what's inside the boundary area. And so you want to kind of like customize your boundary to fit exactly what you want. So in the object properties, right now it's like a 25 by 25. Um, let's see which one. Of, so this is what this is what the one I wanted. I'm going to just extend this out little further than the edges. And keep in mind, um, you're going to have other ones probably overlap them a little bit. If I recall correctly, um, they, when it overlaps, it'll just stay whatever, whatever you're currently in, it'll stay that until you actually leave it. So when you're when it's overlapped, you'll go a little further, and then it, you'll see the the new name. Um, okay, let's not spend too much time on this. Let's just leave it at that. So now when we start, notice we're in island, and I'm sorry the the budget things there. 
let me let me uh I think I can turn that off real quick. It's under HUD. HUD. There we go. Alright, let's try that again. Oh, it turned back on. Alright, I'm not gonna worry about it. But so we're in island right now. Let's head up here. So as soon as we walk into it, now we're on we're now we're in overhang. And it'll be overhang all around these edges. If I jump across, I'm back in island. But the cool thing is you can you can do some Easter eggs with these little areas, uh, the name locations, you know, have like a little section if someone finds it. Maybe it's a very small shrunken area that has a name that is, you know, funny or or something like that. Um, but you can also do, uh, let me show you this real quick before we end. You can do... So I'm just going to copy that one. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to change the name real quick. But what this is, is you, you can basically do like a medium one inside the really large one. And we'll have this small one inside the medium one. And it's really just whichever one you're inside of that's smallest is what, it, what it'll give you. Um, I'm just going to call it piston right now because I don't want to take up too much time on it but so this one now let's see how far down the boundary goes let's, we'll lower it a little bit but and notice how it just went inside the rock that's what i was talking about earlier it's really annoying when you lose them and you have to like fly through objects to try and find them but we've got pit set up so now when we start off we're in island if we come up here we should see it turn into pit or piston, sorry, piston. And then when we walk into our smaller one, we have overhang. So you can have many, any number combination of stuff within the larger one. Like I said, it always will show you what, whatever the smallest one that you're inside of is the name that it'll give you. And that's really just it. I mean, it's a quick overview. I don't, I don't know that there's much more to it. Um, but hopefully this can help you out as you set up your maps, especially if you're hoping to get a map into matchmaking. So uh, thanks for watching and hope you have a good day.